There's something haunting Hasbro. Here's your look at the Kenner Retro The Real Ghostbusters 4 Ghostbuster figures. So I admit I'm a bit behind with having a look at these. It was definitely something I was looking to get, but unfortunately I just couldn't find them in local stores, so I had to go to EBAY. Why? Because I had no other choice. We are going to be having a look at all the four figures here, and I'm doing something a little bit different than what we normally do here on this channel by actually looking at them first in their packaging. Part of me actually doesn't even want to really open these just because I want to keep them still on their vintage card. The card is pretty close to the way that the original Kenner cards were back in the 80s. I think what I might still ultimately do is buy myself a second set of these so I can have ones loose and to go along with, of course, the other Ghostbuster toys that we will be looking at some upcoming reviews. What? What? Yes, we will be looking at some other upcoming Kenner-inspired real Ghostbuster uh, toys, but I'm probably going to have this set loose, and I think I'm going to try to track down a second set so I can actually keep these ones sealed on their original cards. Like I said, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this time around, so I can actually be able to show you guys the, the packaging up close and personal. It is very, very close to the original packaging that we got from the Kenner days. Of course, there are a few things that have been changed, but you can see there's the artwork up the top there, specifically Winston Zedmore with Chomper Ghost. Down below, you've got the little bubble there, I Ain't Afraid of No Ghost. And down below that, you've got Action Zapping Ray with Neutro Neutrona Blaster and Proton Pack Accessories. Even though down below it does show Kenner, on the back of each of the cards, it actually says then Hasbro, because again, Hasbro re-released this line. Again, I think this is this imagery isn't that far different from the ones that we got from the 80s. You can see then the four Ghostbusters. There's Peter Venkman with Grabber Ghost, Ray Stance with Rapper Ghost, Egon Spangler with Gulper Ghost, that's one of my personal favorites, and Winston Zedmore with, again, the Chomper Ghost couple of other figures that have been advertised also on the back. You've got the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man and the Green Ghost, or Slimer. Shows you how to attach the Neutrona Wand, or Proton Stream Wand. and also shows you how to attach it to their back. Um, it doesn't give you an uh, original release date, but it does also say that it was released or distributed from Hasbro here in Quebec. Not, I'm a neighboring place to Quebec. So that's pretty cool. Um, all of the four figures... Again, I will probably want to get a second set of these so I can still keep ones sealed like this. So what you're seeing here, I'm um, just a little side story. I'm actually just propping up Ray Stance. Ray Stance seems to be, you know what, let's lay these figures down. Ray Stance, for some strange reason, his bubble doesn't go right to the very bottom. So it's not perfectly flush. As a result of it, he has some difficulty standing. So I'm just going to lay him down here for actually, you know what, we'll just quickly show you. Certainly the artwork, that was the whole point of showing the packaging. Here's the artwork for Ray Stance with Rapper Ghost. And there's the figure, of course. There's his Proton Pack. Neutrona Blaster on the side. And each one of these beams is actually a different color. Well, we'll talk more about that in a second. There is Egon Spangler with Gulper Ghost. Vintage-looking artwork. I love that. And again, there's the figures right there. His is certainly one of my favorite of the ghosts, the Gulper Ghost. Show you more of that in a second. Of course, his Proton Pack. Um, and then we've got Peter Venkman. Peter Venkman has the notoriety of being the first Ghostbuster figure I picked up as a kid. I still remember where I was. I was at Wolko. I don't know if anybody remembers Wolko. Picked up uh, Peter Venkman. And of course, along with that, got the Ghost, the Proton Pack. But again, vintage looking artwork. And just quickly, one last time, showing you the back of the packaging. Because right after this, we're going to open this up. Join the real Ghostbusters in their ghost-chasing pursuits. You can collect all the real Ghostbusters heroes and ghosts and stage your own supernatural battles. By the way, we will be looking at the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man and the Slimer in upcoming reviews, along with a couple of other goodies that Hasbro sent my way. So with that being said... Uh, what I am going to do is get these all opened up, and we're going to get a closer look at the Kenner Retro Real Ghostbuster figures. 
Now that we have the real Ghostbusters out of their packaging, we're going to get a closer look at them. And of course, for this review, I decided just to have a look at all the four figures together. I'm going to measure only a couple of these. I don't want to have to stop and measure every single one, but we're going to stop, start first with Peter Venkman. Get that right going to the top. Just in case you're curious how tall these figures are, Peter Venkman is roughly, he's about five inches, 5.1 inches, which translates centimeter wise to being about a 13 centimeter tall figure. Um, we can again switch that over back to inches and we'll measure he's about the same height as Ray and they're both the same height as Winston uh, Egon obviously you can see he's a lot taller than all the other figures so we'll measure him he is 5.4 inches and again we'll switch that over to centimeters uh, Egon Spangler I love saying that is 13.9 so about 14 centimeters in height we're going to start things first with Peter Venkman. We're going to start things first with Peter Venkman's ghost, which is the grabber ghost. All of the ghosts, by the way, are made of a very gummy translucent plastic. Of course, just tinted in different colors. You can see just a little bit of my hand probably passing behind it. And like I said, they're very, very rubbery. I like the face certainly on the grabber ghost. It's kind of a kind of looks a little bit like Slimer, just a more meaner looking Slimer with, well, feet. He's waddling across the ground. The idea, though, is that all these ghosts basically play into the Ghostbusters. So this one being a grabber ghost, you can kind of... Well, at least when I was a kid, I used to have it just always latching onto Peter's arm like this. Let go, let go. I probably wouldn't say that as a kid. It was more like, let go, let go. I do like the fact that all the ghosts are included. All the Ghostbusters do come included with their ghosts. And then, of course, the other thing that comes included with them, the thing that you would need to bust them ghosts, is the Proton Pack, which will just put Peter Venkman down just for one second. I want to guys show you the proton packs. The packs themselves are all going to be pretty much molded the exact same from all the Ghostbusters that we're going to be looking at. So I won't spend a whole lot of time showing you that each one of the individual proton packs, as again, the molds are the exact same. The roping is the exact same. In fact, the only thing that does change between any of them is the stream that is attached to it. Wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Oh, and also a nice little touch is there's a Ghostbusters logo there on the top of the Introno wand. But all of the things do have, the only thing that's different really with all of these is the little squiggly bit of neutrino stream that you can twist around. It basically just involves you taking the end of it and twisting it like this. And you get somewhat the effect. I mean, it certainly was a more appealing thing to see as a kid. You can pretend like they all have the neutrino wand beams actually being projected out there. You can also then take the proton packs and you can attach these neutrino wands actually to the side. This is not something I really like to do and probably won't be doing a lot of this. Um, it involves you having to clip, take the part, take the top part and wedge that on top of it. And then of course the other half just meets that up and you can have the actual Neutrona wand attached to the side of the proton pack. For purposes of certainly displaying it, it's nice to see that they can actually attach, but similar to the original toys, the one thing I really be worry, worrisome of is the clip, especially when it tr comes to trying to remove these. There's no real easy way. You can kind of twist it to the side and try to pull, detach the tab this way. But the thing that you will be worrying about, I'm sure long term, is that it's probably going to start bending and warping that plastic. You're probably going to start seeing stress marks. Obviously, the other thing as well is that the beam is going to be sticking straight up when you're displaying these figures. The original Ega, the original Peter Venkman, actually, as a kid, I cut this right off. I just cut that beam right off because I didn't want to have this long thing sticking out from the end of it. So my original Peter Venkman was customized. I was customizing before customizing became cool. Anyways, you take the proton pack. It's quite hollow on the inside here. And you just attach it to the back of the figure. You'll see there's a hole, and this is the hole on Peter, but they're all pretty much going to be the exact same. What's interesting, though, is that the circle peg fits into a hexagonal hole. I guess it's so it's not a super tight fit, and you're still able to remove it. Again, you just put the proton pack on like that. Then take the Neutrono wand and just fit it over top of their arms like this. They don't so much hold it as they sort of get holstered on the side of their arm. And then still the gimmick works so you can spin this back and forth. And that's pretty cool. It's so strange to be able to actually open up retro figures. It's almost as if I've traveled back in time. No, I'm not a time jumper, but it's really, really cool the fact I'm able to do this and have a look at these figures again. Let's go ahead and just pop this off for the time being. 
put the proton pack to the side for the time being. And we'll get a closer look at Peter Bankman. Now, obviously, very little of it looks like Bill Murray. The whole idea of it, that these figures are supposed to be based on the real Ghostbusters cartoon. So he does certainly have a little bit more hair going for him. The material that I don't have, unfortunately, the original figure I can compare it to, I've seen some people talk about that the material that they used for these are a little bit more rubbery. Um, there's not a super amount of gumminess to it, but you can feel that the plastic feels a little softer. Again, I kind of really wish I had the original figures in hand. Now, he has the brown jumpsuits with the Ghostbusters logo you can see on the top of his chest, the top of his shoulder, I should say. From what I'm using, only my imagination, my original memory of these figures, it seems like the figures are about the same. Although, you know, it's not until you actually have them held by adult hands, as as a, much of an adult I like to consider myself, uh, the figures feel smaller. I'm sure they were the original molds, or somewhat the closer original molds. From what I've heard, these aren't the original molds that Kenner had, and they, in fact, I think had to remold a lot of these themselves. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. But the figures do certainly feel a little bit smaller in hand. It was really jarring even to pick up things like G.I. Joe's a little, little later in my collecting days, because the figures seem so tiny. For the articulation on Peter Bankman, it will be the same on all the Ghostbusters. Five points of articulation, so the head rotates all the way around. Um, you can rotate the arms all the way around as well. And of course, for sitting, in the eventual look at the Ecto-1, the Ghostbusters do have the ability to sit into the car. Or the other Ghostbuster vehicles as well. Again, I wanted to start these reviews with a Peter Venkman simply just because that's the figure, the only Ghostbuster figure I had for the longest of times. And then later on, I think I was gift, gifted a couple more of them. I think the only figure I didn't actually have as a kid was Ray Stantz. But I do remember very vividly picking up Peter Venkman first. So that was the reason why I wanted to look at him first when we got the figures out of the packaging. Up next, we'll have a look at Egon Spangler. And starting first, the ghost, of course, that comes in clue with him. My personal favorite of all the ghosts is the Gulper Ghost. No, he's not going to 7-Eleven and buying gulps. Is that what they call gulps at 7-Eleven? The whole idea of it is it's supposed to swallow a head. You can see on the bottom of it, it's all hollow. You could technically even put it on your finger, and it looks like the ghost is munching down. That's a little bit silly. You can definitely see more of the translucency happening here, especially when I wave my hand behind it. But I really like the molding of this one. It looks like somebody squirted lemon juice in his eye. He's only got the one open eye there. But the idea, though, is that you're supposed to take your figure. We'll just stick with Egon, because that's, off, after all, the figure that he comes included with. And this just fits over top of his head. It's not really the best Ghostbuster, I think, to be including this particular ghost, simply just because Egon's got quite a bit more hair sticking forward. I feel like this ghost probably would have been better suited for a character with flatter hair, like maybe Ray Stance or Egon Spangler. But that's the ghost that came included with Egon, so we'll have a look at that one. Did I say Winston Zedmore? I hopefully, hopefully said Winston Zedmore. So that's the ghost that comes included with Egon Spangler. And of course, similar to Peter, he also comes included with a proton pack. The, back, the pack is exactly the same. And again, we can put that onto Egon's back. The clip also works, sadly, the exact same way as well. Again, I'm really worried about long-term stress there must be certainly a simpler way that they could have come about having this clipping onto it. Because again, it just fits over top and it's supposed to sit on top. It, yeah, you still see there's a very long beam sticking out from the top of it. What can I say? I was a dumb kid. I just decided, hey, just cut that right off. I mean, it was only for my own personal collection and I was playing with these. I just didn't like the idea of having a big long beam sticking out like this. Now, the difference between his and Peter's, as you can see, the shape seems to be identical, but of course the coloring of the plastic is different. Uh, Peter's is the more vibrant green, neon green. And actually his is more of a like a muted kind of taffy pink. Still attached the exact same way, very carefully. Oh, I don't like doing this, removing these clips. Again, there must have been, again, some simpler way of doing this. Because I, I'm probably not going to do this for any more of the reviews. There we go. Any stress marks? No. The only stress that we're dealing with right now is the stress of this humble reviewer, making sure he doesn't break those clips. Again, this just attaches onto the side of his arm. And again, works the exact same way. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's almost as if they're more tickling the ghost than anything else. 
Sadly, the original Ghostbuster figures that Kenner had produced didn't come included with ghost traps. Uh, what you see certainly here is what you got back in the day. Let's go ahead and just detach the proton pack. We'll put that to the side for the time being. We get a closer look at Egon. There's a little bit of a blurriness when it comes to the facial features on the figure. And again, unfortunately, because I don't have the original figures, it's kind of hard to do that comparison. He certainly does have the very familiar hairstyle that he has in the original cartoon. Now, his jumpsuits, as I could probably describe it, is kind of like a mint green. Have you ever had mints? Sometimes you go to your grandparents' house, for example, and they would have offered you up mints. This is kind of the color that they usually are. Uh, I have noticed that his legs are a little more on the looser side. Still, the material that they used for this is kind of a more of a gummier plastic, but not super gummy. Has some nice detailing, as you can see. All of them are pretty much going to have the same... Well, that's not 100% true. Let me just stop myself by saying that. They don't have all the same similar types of belts. You'll see in a second when we look at Ray's. Ray's is different. Peter has almost what looks to be like a walkie-talkie. And Egon, I'm guessing, would be more so like a just a little pack there on the front. Also, when you see the difference between the two as well, for obvious reasons, they're not sharing the exact same body. Egon is quite considerably taller than Peter, but they're also, he's a little bit more lankier as well. That I like that the original Kenner line didn't use the exact same molds. Even smaller sized figures, like the Ray that we will be looking at in a second, he's got much more the bigger belly. Egon definitely doesn't have that. Still has the ghost patch there on his shoulder. And there's where the proton pack plugs in to the back there. And for his articulation, again, exactly the same. Head rotates all the way around, arms rotate all the way around, and straight swivels back and forth on the legs. It's a bit of shame, unfortunately, that Egon does have slightly looser legs. Um, not to the point where, again, I can wobble this back and forth like a dinner bell, but his legs are a little more on the looser side. That's a bit of a shame, considering I just took the figures out of the packaging. Now it's time to have a look at Ray. Ray comes in clue with the wrapper ghost. Let's go ahead and pick this one up. This one has a little more difficulty, I find, actually getting to stand properly. I don't know if it's just the way that his feet are angled like this, or it could be the fact that he's got the additional weight on the back with his tail. But putting the ghost down, great, now he actually stands. I was going to say normally he falls to the side like this. Now this one is actually called the wrapper ghost. Again, kind of looks a little bit like Slimer with a big grill of teeth. This one is supposed to wrap around. It has the extendable tail, somewhat extendable tail. And again, you can either wrap that around, I guess, if you wanted to, raise arms in a similar fashion. It kind of looks like he's just carrying around a ghost purse, like he's going for shopping. But again, I like the fact that each one of the ghosts are so unique from one another that they don't look like, like this one here, for example, even though it looks very close, similar face almost to the grabber ghost. Um, again, you got this big giant smile on his face. <laughs> I love this ghost. Okay, so of course, when it comes to Ray's stance, um, just bringing him back in the camera here for a second, he of course comes in clue with the proton pack, plugs onto the back, the, again, the exact same way. You'll uh, pardon me if I don't actually clip the Neutrono wand simply onto it, because again, could they, I don't know, I, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but could they not have found some simpler way? Even if they actually had removed the bottom clip, if they just took the bottom clip off and made it where it only sat on the top ledge, I get the idea that it's supposed to be secure enough so that the Neutrona wand doesn't actually fall off the proton pack. But the forcing of having to put that onto the clip and detach this, put it back on and detach this, certainly that's going to break off at some point. Now, when it comes to his Neutrona wand, his beam is actually more of a tang orange. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. There we go. The shape isn't, again, that much different from the one that we got from Egon and, and Peter. And again, works the same way, just latches onto the side of his arm. Um, you can kind of fit it into the hand like this, but half the time while you're doing this, it usually just results in the proton wand actually dropping down like this. It looks like he's vacuuming more than anything else. So the better thing, the better fit, is to have it just across the arm like this. And again, it gets a little bit more secure. Not the greatest, but it's a little bit better. And again, wiggle, 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 tickle those ghosts. That's so alarming. Let's go ahead and take the proton pack. Actually, you know what? We'll leave it on for the time being because I know we've taken it off every other instance. Still, you've got the Ghostbuster logo patched on the top shoulder. It's only on one side, just in case you're curious. We've got ourselves race dance. 
happy looking guy. Again, doesn't look really anything like Dan Aykroyd, but does look fairly like uh, Ray Stance did from the cartoon. His outfit, I would say, is the closest to the original film jumpsuit, this more lighter colored beige. Uh, you can see he's got a little bit more of a belly going on there. Poor Ray. And you can see, a actually, a little bit of it actually is covering over one pocket on the side of his belt. Supposedly, as they say, as stories go for the Ghostbusters cartoon, when they had introduced Slimer and the real Ghostbusters, that kind of branch off from the original series, I think the idea was that they wanted to get rid of Ray's stance because he wasn't a very exciting character and they wanted to have less screen time of him and more screen time of Slimer. I don't really understand why they would have done that. Of course, his articulation would be the exact same as all the other Ghostbusters, keeping his still proton pack intact. His head rotates again back and forth. You could technically rotate it all the way around. Just be a little bit alarming. You end up killing the poor man. And you can also rotate his arms all the way around as well. And he also has leg articulation too. Funny enough, like all these figures do also have peggles on the undersides of their feet. They don't really attach to anything. I don't even think at one point the firehouse include any sort of pegs or anything like that. So whether these served any purpose in the original toy line is beyond me, but at least they put peg holes. They tend to put a lot of peg holes on the undersides of retro figures like this. Figures in the 80s always tend to have peg holes on the bottoms of their feet. Again, we'll just now remove the proton pack. And we'll go ahead and put him with the others. And let's get a closer look at Winston Zedmore. Winston's ghost is a little more on the interesting side. We'll go ahead and pick this one up right now. This one is called the Chomper Ghost. It looks almost like something I would expect to see from Beetlejuice, like a movie Beetlejuice, for example. It's got these really long-looking kind of billed face here, like a duck bill almost. The idea that this is supposed to open and close, it's not the easiest to pull off, mind you, because it's really a dense plastic that they use. There's, again, like the plastic is soft, but certainly not to the point where you can really open and close the mouth very much. Very interesting looking ghost though. This one also is hollow on the inside. I guess technically you could also take one of the Ghostbusters hands and fit them underneath, or you can even just put it on top of your finger and pretend like you have a puppet. Hello, I'm the Chomper Ghost. That's a little bit silly. Let's go ahead and pick up Winston Zedmore here. And again, we can take the arm of Winston and literally the ghost lives up to his name. He's probably thinking, oh, why did I have to have the Chomper Ghost? It chomps down onto the side of his arm like that. Or again, you can also take the ghost and, hey, look, Winston's got a puppet. Again, that's a little silly. For Winston's proton pack, all the same stock is the same. Everything, everything actually mold-wise is exactly the same. I know we've already looked at these three times already. And we'll go ahead and attach that to the back of his torso. Now for his neutrino wand, neutrona wand, I always want to keep calling it a neutrino wand. Um, the coloring is more of a yellow color as you can see. So all the beams are different from one another. Young me totally would have taken like a knife and cut these right off. Or I would have asked my parents, can you cut this off? And they would have said, what, 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 why do you want to ruin your toy? Oh, just because I don't like the beam. I'm sure that's, that's all I really need to do to sell them the idea of just cutting off and ruining one of my toys. But all, I think the, eventually all the Ghostbusters, even though it started with Peter, they all eventually had the wand beam actually taken off like this. Like I said, I wasn't the very brightest of child. Uh, we can go ahead and again, fit this onto his forearm, just like that. And again, you can either fit it in between his grip like this, or you can have it running all the way up his forearm, which is a little harder to pull off. It almost seems like he's got bigger hands. We'll go ahead and stick with that for the time being. It's not really noise that they make. Let's go ahead and just pop this off. And again, we'll just put this to the side here. Getting a closer look at Winston Zedmore's face. Voiced originally by Arsenio Hall. Which I think was a good voice pick for Winston Zedmore. He sort of has a bit of a lean going for him. It's like his head is, his neck is extended out like he's trying to smell a pie from a neighboring room. Now his jumpsuit again is kind of like that mint color. It's very similar to Egon's, which I'll just go ahead and pick up here. It's just almost a lighter shade of it. It almost seems like two of the characters share the same color and it's just a different, like a different shade of that color. Like Winston's is the same as Egon's. Peter's is the same as Ray's, just a lighter color of it. But I think the colors all work well. I think they're 
properly picking the right colors, I think, for the characters. Again, a nice looking head sculpt based on the original vintage toy. I had heard that this wasn't the original mold, and whether they had to produce the mold again from scratch, or they took like original scans or designs of the molds and then just had to build their own. That's the story, at least I've heard. I don't know if that's true or not. But again, you've got the little ghost patch there on the side of his shoulder. Material again on this, a little bit on the softer side, but certainly not enough I would complain about it. Again, nice detailing on the jumpsuit there. Articulation here on Winston would be the same as all the other Ghostbuster figures. The head rotates all the way around. The arms rotate all the way around as well. And again, to have them sitting inside vehicles, you can't hinge them. The thing about, unfortunately, Winston's, unlike all the others that we've looked at, the placement of where they've put the walkie-talkie here, I feel butts right up against the, the thigh. You see that? This one side isn't so bad. It goes to the full sitting position. But unfortunately, if it comes to Winston having to sit inside the Ecto-1, for example, you'll see that, it, unfortunately, he just keeps hitting the walkie-talkie. I mean, I would have probably moved it over here, or I would have maybe moved it a little bit further over, right, maybe dead center. I guess they didn't want to have it right in the middle, so they put it off to the side, but it does limit, unfortunately, a little bit of the possibility that you can actually pull off with Winston Zedmore here. Decided not to go with the turntable final looks here for the end of this review. Wanted to keep things more on the down low, keep things nice and simple, and have the four Ghostbusters displayed with the proton packs on their back and busting the four ghosts that come included with the figures. Now, of course, these are based on the original Kenner line. I have heard that the molds were changed a little bit because I don't think they had all the original molds available at their disposal. But you know, for the next best thing, you're getting pretty close to the ones that we originally got from Kenner. Of course, you can always still source out the ones that Kenner had put out in the 80s, but that would involve going to places like eBay. And you could either be lucky enough to find a loose set where the paint hasn't scuffed, or more the biggest problem is these proton beams. They were very susceptible to breaking. To find one still loose and intact is really a hard thing to find. Or you could have just been like myself as a kid and just cut that right off from the get-go. I was really a stupid kid for doing that. Now, Hasbro didn't just stop with the four Ghostbuster figures that we looked at in this review, of course, advertised on the back of the packaging. They also released the Stayed Puffed Marshmallow Man, the Green Ghost Slimer. They have released an Exo Ecto-1, the vehicle, of course, and they also released a Bug Eye and Fearsome Flush. They did also release, I think, one of the role-playing toys, the one that shot the ping-pong balls, but I hope it doesn't just stop at that. Hasbro... If it's possible, if you could release also the original Proton Pack and also release the original Ghost Trap. A trap that I wish I could have had as a kid. I remember seeing it at Kmart. Didn't have the money at the time. Went back with the money. It was gone. And I never was able to get it again. I could, again, probably find it on places like eBay. But to get either one loose and intact and working, it's probably not going to happen. And to get one sealed, of course, that's a little bit more mucho dinero. Have you managed to pick up any of the original retro Kenner Ghostbusters that Hasbro have put out? Again, they were released, I believe, at Walmart only. Correct me if I'm wrong by that. But again, I'm going to see if I can try to track down another set of these so I can keep one set loose and on display like you're currently seeing here at the end of this video and then keep the other set still sealed and nicely displayed on my shelf. But have you picked up any of these figures? If so, let me know down below in the comments section. And of course, if you're a big fan of seeing more real Ghostbuster toys, just know that all the ones that I've listed are all the things that we are going to be looking at in upcoming reviews. So yes, the Stayed Puff Marshmallow Man. Yes, the Green Ghost or Slimer. The Ecto-1, Bug-Eyed Ghost, and Fearsome Flush. Some of those were provided from the folks over at Hasbro. So there's definitely going to be a lot of Ghostbuster reviews coming your way. Make sure, though, that you're not missing out on any of those reviews that will be coming up to this channel by hitting the subscribe button down below, by turning the bell notification on, and by keeping your ghoulish peepers peeled to this channel because there will be videos popping up more regularly. I say more regularly because it seems like already, Monday to Friday, I'm doing two videos a day, but I really do want to get more of these videos out, especially the real Ghostbusters because I'm a little behind on having a look at the set, so there's definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.